folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, let's take a look at David Rosenberg's prediction about a recession this year and why stock investors should be careful. As you guys are probably well aware, the S&P 500 is just inches off its all-time high right now. If we take a look at the daily chart, it's at roughly 47.84. And you can see back here in January of 2022, that was the highest point around 4,800. But when it went to all-time highs before, it fell about 27%. So that was one of the worst years for the stock market in recent history. And David Rosenberg is basically saying that this year in 2024, the S&P 500 could suffer the same fate and go through a big correction. So why pay attention to David Rosenberg? Because he did call the 2008 recession, and not many people did. However, he isn't right all the time. At the beginning of last year, he told the Financial Post that by the end of 2023, interest rates would come down a lot, and they haven't really yet. Rates have stayed high pretty much all throughout 2023, so he was too early in terms of that prediction. If he's wrong about the stock market this time, and instead of going down, the stock market continues to go up and make new all-time highs, then investors could lose out on a lot of capital appreciation. So let's take a look at the fundamentals and technicals and try to gauge if Rosenberg is correct or not. Let's take a listen to what he has to say on the topic. Recessions do happen, and it's best to be braced for them. And I just fear that this level of complacency is going to cause a lot of investors to not be prepared for what I consider to be an inevitable part of the economic cycle. Uh, we had soft landings in 1969, 1979, 1989, 2000, 2007, and these were all soft landing years. And the following year, we had an NBER-defined recession. And recessions always followed not just an aggressive Fed tightening cycle, but a what happened in 2023 that gave this false glow of how the economy was really doing was that we had fiscal stimulus equivalent to roughly 2% of GDP. Put to you this way, two-thirds of the growth in 2023 came from fiscal stimulus that morphs into about one and a half percentage points of fiscal withdrawal in 2024. So I think that uh, we're going to have a recession in 2024. I know it sounds like it's a stale argument. Uh, but to tell people that there's no recession because it hasn't happened yet, which I heard plenty of in 2007 when I was working for Mother Merrill, is like telling somebody in Toronto, Canada, that because it didn't snow in December, winter's been called off. So I see a recession starting in the opening months of 2024. I think this is going to cause a reversal in the Santa rally in the stock market. Uh, as aggressive as the Fed is now in its stop plots in terms of calling for lower interest rates, I actually don't think that there's enough price dead. Uh, and therefore, my big call, I think we're gonna be seeing nominal GDP growth no better than 3% and probably close to 2%. It won't be the first time that's happened, but this is going to anchor the long end of the treasury market, which I think is going to be delivering equity-like returns without equity risk for 2024. That is my highest ambition. So according to David Rosenberg, the stock market today has worse fundamentals than back in December of 2021, which was just before the all-time high. And he is suggesting that investors have proper hedges in place. So that could be, for example, having some bonds in your portfolio, because when the economy deteriorates, central banks tend to lower interest rates, which props up the value of existing bonds. Another way is to just hold cash if you're not comfortable with bonds, or you can use inverse ETFs that gives you the opposite returns of indexes. I don't recommend those, but that is an option for some people. If you do continue to be in stocks, David Rosenberg is saying financials might be a good place to stay because they perform relatively well against other sectors during periods of deflation. The main fundamentals he's talking about is the weakening labor market where companies are slower to hire. And also in terms of valuation, if we take a look at the Schiller PE ratio, which shows how expensive the market is, you can see the average has been 17 for the last more than 100 years. And the median has been about 16. So half the time, the ratio is above this and the other half it's below this number. 
The higher the ratio, the more expensive the market is. And today it's at 32.2. So pretty much double what the median is. So based on this, the market is quite overvalued. However, that doesn't mean we're going to see a correction right away. If Rosenberg is also early in this prediction, like he was last year about the recession, then this ratio could go higher. And if earnings stay pretty much flat, then that means the stock market could have more upside. What about technicals? Well, it does look pretty bullish overall. The market is above the 9 the 21 and the 50 exponential moving average on a daily chart. The MACD is looking pretty bullish as well as the RSI, which is above the 50 line. However, one thing to point out is we do see some negative divergences happening. So when we look at the stock market, you can see it made a high here and a higher high over here and then an even higher high over here. So it looks like it wants to make higher highs as time goes on. But when we look down here at the relative strength index, this volume based indicator signals how much pressure pushing up or down on the market. You can see that it made a high here, but then the next time it didn't go as high and then the next time it went even lower. So the RSI is making lower highs, but the stock market is making higher highs. So this negative divergence is something to keep an eye on because it means that every time the market goes up back up to that point, there is less and less buying pressure to support it. So at some point, the market will no longer make higher highs. And if the RSI is looking pretty weak, then watch out for a breakdown of support and lower prices after that. So because that hasn't happened yet, we can't really say that this is the highest point because we could have triple negative divergences or even quadruple negative divergences before the chart plays out and the market goes the other way. But for now, because all the exponential moving average lines you can see are pointing up, RSI above 50 and the MACD above the zero line. The MACD line is converging with the signal line. So all of these signs are pretty bullish and the negative divergence has to play out before I become bearish on this market. We can also take a look at the fear and greed index. Usually when it's at greed or extreme greed, it won't be long before the market dips down. Just like when the stock market reaches a peak, it won't be long before it makes a correction. So if we take a look at the relationship between the fear and greed index, which is in light blue here, and the stock market, S&P 500 in red, they have a positive correlation for the most part. But in the recent couple of weeks, the fear and greed index has been making lower highs, the blue line, but the S&P 500, the red line, is diverging away from it, and it looks like it wants to make higher highs. So usually when there is a discrepancy like this, the stock market will have to eventually follow the fear and greed index and go lower. But again, looking at the S&P 500 chart, it really has to get below first the green line and ideally the blue line, the 21 EMA, before a longer term bearish trend can happen. Earlier this month, you can see it did close below the blue line, but that was just for one day. And then the next day, it popped right back up again, and it continued moving higher. So we had a false breakdown, which was not the short signal that a lot of bears were looking for. And now we're back up to the record highs again of the recent year. So most likely we are going to head higher because of the technicals, but I think there may be a trap playing out here. And the trap will look something like this. This happened at the all time highs of 2022. It actually started um, a couple months earlier in November of 2021. So basically the market made a high, went down, went back up to about the same height, went down, went back up again, and basically hit this resistance wall over here one, two, three times. And then the next time you can see it surpassed it and went a lot higher. That was a single day breakout. And this was a bull trap because it fooled a lot of people into thinking since it broke through resistance, this line here, it has to head higher, which of course it didn't. It just consolidated for a week or so and then dropped back down below. And the big signal that this pump was over is because when it headed down here and went back up, it hit this line again, but instead of support, it was resistance. And you can also see that it broke through through this channel that it was in for a long time. So the first signal that the market was going to go down a lot is it got rejected from this resistance line. And then the second signal is that it got rejected from the bottom of this channel line here. So unless it gets back into this channel, there's no reason to be super bullish. And the market went down. And of course, it bottomed in October of 2022. So fast forward to today, could we have something similar to that where the market goes down maybe over the next week, comes back up and makes a newer high and maybe make an all time high, trap in some bulls and then continues down like this. 
that's entirely possible. It would break through pretty much this channel. And if it tries to come back up and retest and gets rejected off this channel, then that's a big sign that it's probably going to head lower. Now, if this plays out, but instead of going down, it bounces off the support level and heads higher, then I would be super bullish if that was the case. And then we're looking at 5,000 S&P 500 and then maybe 5,100 over the next quarter or so. Either of these situations could play out. And one thing that can sort of help whether to be bullish or bearish in the market is to take a look at the VIX because the volatility index is in a range and it usually moves against the S&P 500. So here I have a bullish channel going up. And right now we're at the bottom of that. The VIX is at 12.7. If the VIX heads higher, then the S&P 500 will likely head lower. And that is what I'm expecting because if the price is within a channel, then it will likely follow that channel until it breaks out. The other thing to keep in mind is that long term, the VIX doesn't stay this low for long. If I take a look at the monthly chart and I go back all the way to 1990, you can see the purple line down here is 12 and 12.7 is right here where the red line is. So we're pretty much at the bottom of the VIX. And because the VIX is a range, the lowest it can go to is zero, which is pretty much impossible to hit. But I would say 12 is pretty low as far as where the VIX can drop to. So over the next couple of weeks, I will be looking at the VIX and seeing how it behaves. Because if the VIX drops out of this range and goes lower, and especially if it falls below 12, this purple line, then the next support I have is down here at this yellow line, which is 11. And that's because 11 was a price point where it found support a handful of times before. So if it breaks through this channel, 12 is going to be the target. If it breaks through 12, then 11 is going to be the next target. And if that's the case, then the stock market is most definitely going to head higher to 5,000. So I would be very bullish if that was the case. But otherwise, I am cautious because as David Rosenberg said, we are at a very similar situation to the beginning of 2022, and it might not be a bad idea to take some money off the table, especially when 2023 was a really good year for the market and a lot of people probably made gains. Anyway, I will have another SPY update coming up soon. I'll have a new challenge for this year, so stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for watching. Good luck with your investments, and I'll talk to you in the next one.